Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Wonder Woman 1984. This is my official review for the new sequel to the original Wonder Woman from 2017. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment so you don't miss any DC or Wonder Woman related videos in the future. I'm sure I'm going to be doing one on the post credit scene, which was not actually included in the press screening version that they were showing to the press, including obviously I saw it at a screening in London. And so, yeah, I'm sure we'll make a video on that whenever we get to see that. And so, let's get into this. Wonder Woman 1984 is brilliant. It's a riveting, heartfelt blast. Gal Gadot returns as the iconic Wonder Woman in the second film, surpassing in many ways, acting-wise, to the first. She is absolutely brilliant in the first, but in the second, she's absolutely brilliant as well. She really brings her all in this role, and so, Goddard is show-stopping, she's just everything you want in a Wonder Woman, and so in 2017, Wonder Woman was released and had fans crying and shivering in awe. I remember going back to 2017, my first screening of Wonder Woman, you know, opening day, I went there, I watched the film, and I left shocked. It had me crying, it had me shivering, I was in complete awe of the film, especially No Man's Land scene. That moment, just my jaw dropped right to the ground. That is what superhero films are about, and it's one of the best superhero films ever, that being the original Wonder Woman from 2017. And so once again, some of those same beats are sort of felt in this new one, and like I said, it's brilliant. But I would say it's not quite as good as the original, but that's really hard to beat for me because it has such a special place in my heart. And so you really do feel overwhelmed at points in Wonder Woman 1984. Kind of like that similar feeling I just described with the No Man's Land scene and many scenes in the original Wonder Woman, which I literally rewatched the night before so I could have a good comparison between the two. And so I think this is definitely with the help of Gal Gadot, she's fantastic. The cinematography, the direction, and also Hans Zimmer's music, which is clashing, you know, against all of this with its sort of orchestral nature and it really pounds the message through. And it does feel overwhelming at times, like I said, especially with this one scene, which is quite spoilery, so I don't really want to get into it, but it has something to do with her lassoing into the air. So there are many scenes throughout the film littered like that and it's just fantastic. You are overwhelmed. I cried at many points. There was that one specific moment I just talked about where I was just in absolute awe of it. So it does have those similar moments. Maybe not as many as the first, but it's really, really good. And so, yeah, so many of these moments are just pure joy, wonder, and awe. And this is a really adventurous film, it really gives you a lot. And so now talking about the story, so Diana's story is certainly the best thing in this film. It captivates and you almost wish that you were only following Diana and Steve because the villains definitely have more screen time than this, that being Maxwell Lord, who obviously we've seen in Supergirl, this is a different version, played by Pedro Pascal. And then also you have Barbara Minerva aka Cheetah, played by Kristen Wiig. They certainly have more screen time than the villains did in the original Wonder Woman. And so, you know, you are kind of left wanting more Wonder Woman. You're wanting more Gal Gadot. That is a testament to how good the first film is and testament to how good Gal Gadot is. That you literally just want to see her and Chris Pine the whole time, you know, going on these adventures kind of exploring and being a superhero. And so, yeah, she's really show-stopping in this. And so it's beautifully shot and, you know, it has some really nice colours, the blues and yellows of Themyscira in this kind of sun-drenched kind of opening scene was just so good. And it's shot in IMAX in portions and the way that it creates some sort of depth to it really, really says a lot in the few scenes that they shoot with IMAX cameras. And the opening scene, like I said, in Themyscira is just amazing and it's a non-stop thrill, really heart-pounding and very engaging as you see the young Diana try and best some of the Amazonians greatest warriors in this intense kind of action scene and so you know everything is very sweeping and it's immersive really to the point where you are so engaged you feel like you're there and so like I said Wonder Woman 1984 is really good and we'll get to the story in a minute because I know a lot of you guys are interested in what happens I don't want to spoil too much, so I'm mainly talking about what works and what doesn't work in the film. 
But yeah, the sequel is really, really good. And it definitely delivers up to expectations. It's so good. But trying to match the original Wonder Woman is really hard because that is just amazing. That is top level superhero films, top level film. But this film has a few more downfalls than the first film. I think the main downfall is something to do with Maxwell Lord and his son. There is a storyline that kind of goes on throughout the whole film and it's a bit over the top and feels a little bit strange compared to how great the other storylines are. Barbara is interesting. She starts off as a very kind of Christian wig character where she's kind of quirky and stuff and then she progressively gets darker and I think the darker she gets the better Barbara gets, the better Christian wig gets. And so now moving on more towards the story. So Steve and Diana's relationship is really the best thing about this film. It's really bewitching and the way that Steve is brought back is really well done and it convinces you within seconds like there is no problem with that and I think you know bringing him back was really the best option because this was one of the best parts of the film and so the exploration of the 1980s is best told through those few snippets where you see Diana being a superhero around a mall. The mall scene is amazing in the film kind of towards the start. And then also, you know, one of the best pieces of them exploring the 1980s is when Steve returns and his sort of amazement in this kind of shift in culture from the 1940s, where obviously he has been far removed for many years and he just, you know, magically returns and obviously I'm not going to tell you how he returns, but you'll get to see that and it really works. And so I think this is where the film excels the best, where it's more contained, it's more personal, because it feels like a reunion for yourself with these characters, not just for these characters, because, you know, the relationship between Steve and Diana in the first film was one of the best things about it. And when Steve had to go into that plane, it was heartbreaking. And so it's a great joy to have him back. And I think it's definitely going to be loved by fans. And so, yeah, like I said, this film is just fantastic. It's really good. It definitely lives up to the hype and lives up to the anticipation for it. Although it's very hard to beat the first Wonder Woman. Maybe that's just very hard for me because I love the first one so much. And it's one of my favorite films of the last decade. I absolutely love it. And it is kind of different, mainly due to the time period shift. Obviously, with the 2017 Wonder Woman, you have them in World War II. It's kind of a situation where in the past you would have hoped for a natural hero in real life to go up onto no man's land, take all the fire and, you know, be a superhero. You would love that. That is the perfect superhero situation. And in this film, it's a bit different because the story is a bit more kind of normal, whereas it's just like a big threat to the world rather than, you know, being in this very dire situation. It was just like a normal world. And then this person comes to kind of do some nefarious acts and so I think the World War 2 setting is a bit better than the 80s setting but I think they do a good job with the 80s it's just I think the World War 2 thing is perfect for Wonder Woman and you know like I said it's very hard to beat and so in terms of what else happens in the story now Diana is living in America it's 1984 and she's not living in London obviously most of the first film was in London you have you know, some great Wonder Woman moments because you flash back to Themyscira, you see a lot of what happens during, you know, Diana's younger years when she's training at the start, not much else towards the end of the film. And then it's mainly to do with Steve returning, it is mainly to do with these kind of weird occurrences that are happening. And Diana has to step up and kind of reveal herself a little bit to the world because at the point of the start of the film, it's still elusive as to who this person is who is saving and doing these mysterious acts where she's only been popping up every once in a while and so you know she's not known to the world yet like she is in like Justice League or something like that where everyone knows oh there's Batman there is Wonder Woman and Superman and stuff like that so it's very isolated this story it's definitely all in for just the Wonder Woman side of the DC universe and you have you know the villains Maxwell Lord he's pretty good you have Cheetah, who gets progressively better, and she's very scary by the end. So hopefully I haven't spoiled too much. I tried to keep away from some spoilers, but still kind of explain a bit about the story because I know you guys are interested in that. But yeah, maybe we will talk about this more when we can go into more detail as to what is going on in this film when you guys see it. And also, remember there is a post credit scene, but they haven't shown it. 
and we can make a video on that when we get to find out what that post credit scene is because they didn't release it in any press screenings or any press screeners online. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new to the channel and enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to not miss any DC Universe videos because I'm going to be making more videos about Wonder Woman 1984 as you guys start to see more. And then also we are covering the Batman, we have been covering the Batman obviously alongside of the DC TV stuff, so please subscribe even if you're just here for the DC EU stuff, it's going to be happening more. From now on there's going to be more videos, so be on the lookout for that. And for now, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.